Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you about horizontal immunity for iniquity, transgression, and sin, the manifest presence of Antichrist. This is part one of five. Revelation chapter 18, verse 1 through 8. Let's go ahead and go through this here. Okay, I'm going to read Revelation chapter 18, verse 1 through 8. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth, of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her, even as she rewarded you, double unto her, double according to her works. And the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double. How much she hath glorified herself and lived delicious, deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. We know, okay guys, in these first two verses, we know that we have the angel of God here descend from heaven with the glory of God. 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4 and 6 and 7. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. And Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. So in these first two verses, we have the angel of God descending from heaven with the glory of God and enlightening the entire world. And he cries out with a loud voice as he beholds the habitations of of all the demons of hell arrayed in their final seats their con in their consummation with the flesh of man. Matthew chapter 12 verses 43 through 45 where we have Jesus gives us the manifestation of spirit satanic and habitation of man with the demons of hell. When the when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he come, he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than him, than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. So here we have we have the inhabitation of the demons of hell upon the flesh of man as man is arrayed in the kingdom of hell as manifested by Revelation chapter 18 verses 1 and 2. And I also wrote here to support this Matthew chapter 13 verses 47 to 50 and Ezekiel chapter 7 verse 24. So in Revelation 18 1 and 2 what we have is that the angel of heaven comes down from the angel of God comes down from heaven and lightens the whole world with the glory of God and is beholding the final seat of all lost souls in the kingdom of hell as they are anointed with the spirit of Antichrist and the demons of hell are arrayed upon their flesh. So it's and it's this is what this angel is actually witnessing is Revelation chapter 17 verse 1 through 6 which is the final seat of all lost souls in the kingdom of hell. So this is in Revelation 18 1 and 2 this is he, this is what this angel witnesses. It witnesses the 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 mark of the beast upon all lost souls. So this is the total evacuation of the spirit of grace as the demons of hell are sealed in perfect union with Satan as children in the kingdom of hell. 1 John 3, 10 through 15, Revelation 17, 1 through 6, Isaiah chapter 5, verses 8 and 9, Reve uh, excuse me, Isaiah chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. 1 John 3, 10 for in this the children of God are, are made manifest and the children of, of the devil. For whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not are not his brother. So we know this is the total evacuation. Revelation 17, 1 through 6 is a total evacuation of the spirit of grace within all flesh as depicted by, in Matthew chapter 24, verse 10 through 12. And... 
this is the the imposition of the mark of the beast. It's also manifested in Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13, which is the parable of the ten virgins. So, the total evacuation of the spirit of grace is the demons of hell are sealed in perfect union with Satan's children in the kingdom of hell. So this is the demons of hell. This, they're, they're, the Antichrist, the spirit of Antichrist is in their blood and the demons of hell are, are arrayed upon their flesh. So it's a very, it's a horrible situation. And this is, this is actually what this angel is witnessing is actually, uh, uh, the final seat of all lost souls in the kingdom of hell is manifest in Revelation 17, one through six. It's seeing it's, it's one angel and it sees every single demon in hell, it could be trillions of them, and they're they're all they're everything upon earth and in heaven is incorporated into one body, as the the mark of the beast is made manifest upon all flesh. So, um, Revelation seventeen one through six, the spiritual status of all flesh that receives the mark of the beast, a living animated petition for their king antichrist to appear. Isaiah chapter forty seven verse one, a temporal reign. Of the residents of hell and death with flesh, with the flesh of man, one John two fifteen through eighteen, which depicts the love, the lust of flesh, the lust of eyes, and the pride of life, and the spirit of antichrist that was working, actually working uh, in opposition to God in 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 John's time, and so uh, these people are a living animated petition to their king antichrist for to him to appear, and really I should have put Revelation thirteen eighteen there, there because that is the that's the 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 fulfillment of the petition that's 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 um, a living animated petition. They're dead souls, but they're still they're residing in suspended animation, and they're they all have the mark of the beast, and they're they're it's a living animated petition for their king antichrist to appear. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. So, verse three, verse three of Revelation eighteen one through eight. For all nations are drunk of the wine of wrath for fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacy. This is her ideology. This is her her fraudulent ideology, her fraudulent Christian ideology that's that's arrayed with false doctrines that leads people away from God and to instead of in in the place of towards God. They, it leads people away from God instead of, toward, instead of towards God. So this is what this verse is depicting. Here God declares the satanic criminal psychopathology, the worship of death as man abiding in a fraudulent faith labors for sexual and monetary control over, over the democratic unions of the world. The government of Satan is occupied and enforced by the image of the beast. In Revelation chapter 13 verses 15 through 17, the constitution of, of satanic captivity where the image of the beast appears. He solicits the worship of death and he causes the mark of the beast and Colossians chapter 1 verses 12 through 18 where Jesus Christ is to be declared declared to be the the image of God so and on the flip side of that the image of of satanic captivity is the image to the beast this is the the ambassador bearing the seal of satan and the only flesh and blood corporeal form that that solicits the worship of death and forces the mark of the beast on pain of death so Verse 4 and 5, Holy Father God summons all of his faithful and true followers to egress fraudulent apostate Christianity. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not forsakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. This is God himself declaring that he has many faithful believers in Babylon that that he knows love him and have labored their entire their lives you know, they they've given up their lives to labor for him and and loving him and a manifestation of the his glory and loving their neighbors and so god is calling them here to come out of babylon and we know babylonian captivity is it's it's the the final the mark of the beast is sim symbolic of babylonian or babylonian which could be the other way around, but the mark of the beast is depicted as Babylonian captivity because this spirit of Antichrist has been working to draw people away from God and confuse them about the nature of God since the time of Babylon. And that's so, I believe that that's one reason why the, the, the mark of the beast and its final manifestation of stealing all 
souls that 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 are evacuated with the spirit of grace and receive the mark of the beast and seated permanently in the kingdom of hell this is one reason why uh it's depicted as babylonian captivity because this is this is not a spirit that just appeared overnight this is a spirit that has been working in the world the spirit of antichrist has been working in the world since babylon it's been working to confuse people and to draw people away from god instead of people being on a righteous path toward god and a manif and manif Manifesting his glory and seeking after his face and in love and righteousness. So it's been working for a very, very long time. But John says in 1 John 2, 15 through 18, when he says to love not the world, and he depicts the loves, the lust of the eyes and the, the lust of flesh, the lust of eyes and the pride of life, he says that Antichrist is working. So once Christ came and manifested his ministry and died on the cross, it, Satan got immediately got busy. Uh, uh, trying to draw the world into false apostate Christianity. So this is Satan's been doing this for a very, very long time. This is not something that is just appearing overnight now in our world. This is a spirit that has been at work for thousands of years to to accumulate all you know all flesh into the kingdom of hell as captured by Satan with the mark of the beast and arrayed as an army against the righteousness and glory of Holy Father God. So. Verse 4 and 5, God, Holy Father God summons all of his faithful and true followers to agree egress fraudulent apostate Christianity as they behold the works of Satan himself as manifest by the image to the beast, the ambassador bearing seal, Satan's seal, begin to come to light in their hearts. Proverbs chapter 4 verses 14 through 19. And here we have the way of the wicked is as darkness they know not at the stumble, but the path of justice is a shining light that shineth more and more to the perfect day. And we have a small glimpse into the 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 satanic criminal psychopathology as it exists in the mind of the image to the beast as the mark of the beast is manifest in full within its souls and it labors in opposition it labors to captivate the creature in opposition to holy father god and on pain of death and it's very very cruel is what this this passage depicts in proverbs chapter 4 verses 4 4 14 through 19 and verse 5 verse 5 Revelation 18, 5. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. This is a very important passage here in the Bible, in, Reve in this passage, Revelation chapter 18, verse 1 through 8. Holy Father God declares the habitation of Satan, the demons of hell, and the flesh of man... Uh, the habitation of Satan, the demons of hell, and the flesh of man abiding in a false, false and fraudulent proclamation of horizontal immunity, immunity as they are at the very gates of their eternal reward. Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 through 15, the great right throne judgment. And I saw a great right throne, him that sat on whose face the earth and the, or the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. Of course, and of course, Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13, the parable of the ten virgins, which depicts the, the total evacuation of the spirit of grace within all flesh, that and the mark, which is the the mark of the beast. So, but this is very important because as men array in opposition to Holy Father God, and they uh, they incorporate satanic criminal psychopathology into their souls, and they they labor to captivate the image of the beast labors to captivate the creature to and rendered in service unto death as the image of the beast pours out the spirit of antichrist solicits the worship of death and and, and it causes revelation 13 15 through 17 causes the mark of the beast the image of the beast we know declares is laboring now today to declare horizontal immunity and democratic union it's laboring to conceal iniquity transgression and sin from the public consciousness and uh, thus captivating on pain of death um, all satanic criminal psychopathology unto itself as it labors to captivate the creature within Satan's kingdom as manifested in Revelation chapter 17 verses 1 through 6. So verse 6 and 7 Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. And the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double. How much she hath glorified herself and lived illicitly. So much torment, sorrow, sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I said a queen and, an, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Appears to me to be the terrible and horrifying consequences of allowing Satan to reign supreme in the hearts of his condemned prisoners. Psalm 69, 33. For the Lord hears the prayer of the poor, the, and dis, the Lord hears the prayer of the poor, and despiseth not his prisoners. Matthew 10 21 and the brother shall deliver up the brother to death and the father of child and children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to 
cause him to be put to death. This is a total evacuation of the spirit of grace within all flesh. One is manifested by one John four sixteen. For God is love, and he that dwells in love dwells in God, and God in him. And of course Matthew twenty four ten and twelve. Uh, Jesus foretold here. And then shall many be offended, shall betray one another, hate one another, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. This is a total evacuation of the spirit of grace within all flesh that received the mark of the beast and are seated and their final seat in the kingdom of hell is manifested by Revelation chapter 17 verses 1 through 6. So verse 8, finally Holy Father God declares the full, the fall of the eleven seven last plagues upon all who have the seal of Satan, the mark of the beast, and are permanently seated spiritually in the kingdom of hell as manifested in Revelation chapter 17 verses 1 through 6. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she, she, and she shall be utterly burned with fire for strong is Lord God who judges her. And this is the manifestation of final judgment upon all flesh that receive the mark of the beast, the seven last plagues do not, of course, fall on um, the people that receive the seal of God and that receive eternal life and live through the final moments of earth's history before the second second advent of Jesus Christ. The seven last plagues only fall on the people that have the mark of the beast. It's a spiritual mark. It's there so the angels of heaven can discern between the righteous and the wicked, Matthew chapter 13, verses 47 through 50. And it's... It, it's their prison prisoner number. It's their their captives, their children of Satan. They have the mark of the beast, and there's there's no more love abiding in their souls. And so there, it's the total evacuation of the spirit of grace is manifested by the fruit of the spirit. In Galatians chapter five, verses twenty two and twenty three. So conclusively, in Revelation eighteen one through five, Holy Father God declares vertical condemnation upon Satan, his demons, and all flesh. One Corinthians fifteen fifty. For flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Romans chapter eight verses five through eight. For the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. For the carnal mind is enmity against God, and it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. And that's not a full, that's not the full passage there. So, but in conclusively, in Revelation 18, 1 through 5, Holy Father God declares vertical condemnation upon Satan and his demons and all flesh, as the image of the beast is simultaneously declaring to all of the earth horizontal immunity for iniquity, transgression, and sin in the presence of Holy Father God. And this is the constitution of Satan. This is actually Revelation 13, 15. 15 through 17 is the constitution of Satan. It's the manifestation of the image to the beast, which is the ambassador bearing the seal of Satan, soliciting the worship of death and imposing death on all that will not worship the image to the beast and causing the mark of the beast to fall upon all flesh. So as far as I know in sacred scripture, there's only one, there's only one enforcement uh, and causality of the mark of the beast us uh, of the mark of the beast in all of sacred scripture and that is the image to the beast the ambassador bearing the seal of satan so uh, so as this uh so as the image of the beast is simultaneously declaring horizontal immunity for, for iniquity transgression and sin In the presence of Holy Father God, as manifested by the constitution of Satan in Revelation chapter 18, verse 1 through 5, Holy Father God is, wait, wait, wait. In the presence of Holy Father God, the constitution of Satan, they, they, what they're doing is they're claiming dominion as it holds the creature in captivity sealed as a child of, child of Satan. Romans chapter 6 verses 12 through 14 for it says, it, it, which says, Let not sin have dominion over you neither, you, neither yield yourselves instruments of unrighteousness, but yield yourself unto God. Let not sin have dominion over you, over you that you should obey it in the lesser of. But you, neither let sin, wait, let's go, let me, let me go to this real fast. I'm on the spot here. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, excuse me, that you should obey it unless thereof. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. So this is speaking of the dominion of sin with within the soul of man as it takes man captive and it, it claims dominion within the flesh of man as man yields to his lusts. At the end of the passage says, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under the law, but under grace. So this is the dominion. This is the satanic captivity that the, the, the image of the beast, as it's declaring horizontal immunity for iniquity, transgression, and sin in the presence of Holy Father God, it declare, at the full manifestation of the constitution of Satan, Revelation chapter 13, verses 15 through 17. This is the, the image of the beast claiming dominion as the ambassador bearing the seal of Satan, as it holds the creature in captivity, sealed as a child of Satan, Romans chapter 6, verse 12. 
12 through 14. This is what, and it's claiming dominion in the earth by the fact that it has captivated the creature in service as it is soliciting the worship of death and it's causing the mark of the beast upon the pain of the, upon, upon the pain of death. The image of the beast claiming dominion with all, within all of the democracies of the world by solicitation of murder, the beginning of death for all excuse me, the image of the beast claiming dominion within all the democracies of the world by solicitation of murder of God's children. And this is the beginning of death for all flesh that receive the mark of the beast. James chapter 1, verses 13 through 15. Let no man say, when he is tempted, I have tempted of God, for God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, evil, neither tempted to any man. For man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So, and we know the image of the beast is, that's the reason it's soliciting the worship of death and it causes the mark of the beast it is to in the fulfillment of its own lust John 8 44 you're the father don't unless your father you will do he was a murderer from the beginning of both down the truth because there's no truth in him and that passage could read you are the father don't unless, you, unless your father you will do he is a murderer to fulfill all his lusts and this is what the image of the beast is doing it's soliciting satanic captivity to captivate the creature as it is trying to fulfill its own temporal lusts so this is the very labors of, of Satan as one mind, one voice, and one unified spirit is manifest in Revelation 17, 17. For God hath put it in their hearts to fulfill his will and to give to, and to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast of the world until the words of God should be fulfilled. And we know the beast is Satan as manifested by Revelation chapter 13, 18. So the image of the beast has given its souls in, in unity as one one mind, one voice, and one spirit to Satan as manifest in Revelation 17, 17. And they're laboring to conceal iniquity, transgression, and sin from the majority and democratic union as prophesied by the apostle paul in 2 thessalonians chapter 2 verses 3 and 4 let no man deceive you by any means for that for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man's sin of sin be revealed the son of perdition who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called god or that is worshiped so that he is god sent the temple of god assuming himself that he is god it's satan stealing the, the the glory of the world and uh by solicitation of murder and captivating the creature on pain of death to to conceal in a horizontal manifestation of temporal and a measure of immunity as as prophesied in, in civil control and power in Revelation chapter 17 verses 3 and 4. This is what the image of the beast is doing today. It's laboring to declare horizontal immunity for iniquity, transgression, and sin to conceal its sins and its criminal works from the public consciousness as it solicits the worship of death, pours out the spirit of Antichrist, Revelation 14, 9 and 10, and is the cause of the mark of the beast. So, Matthew chapter 5 verses 13 states... You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt hath lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot of men. I personally believe that Jesus once again declares the falling away of the multitude of souls abiding in harlotry, false apostate Christianity. As manifest in Galatians chapter 4 verses 27 where it says, more are the children of the desolate than she that has an husband. And here the mark of the beast, the abomination of desolation, is declared upon all flesh. And Matthew chapter 5, verses 13, is the falling away of false apostate Christianity. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt is lost its savor, wherewith shall it be seasoned? It's good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden underfoot of men. And that's Jesus here is, is talking to men that were once made righteous but have fallen away into satanic criminal psychopathology and into captivity to the image of the beast. So these souls, spiritual status, this Galatians 5, 5 excuse me, Matthew chapter 5 verses 13 is, are these, is these souls in false apostate Christianity's spiritual status as they labored to conceal the works of Satan in their congregations as held by the beast in his image. And this is how the beast looks at them, is they're good for nothing, and the very last similitude of life contained in their flesh, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men, as manifested by Matthew chapter 23, verses 34 through 38. So... The image to the beast here. This is this gives Matthew chapter five verses thirteen gives us a small glimpse of as how the image to the beast views its captives, its satanic captives, as it captures those in false apostate Christianity. It solicits the 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 the, the mark of the beast within false apostate Christianity, and it captures a lot of people people and and holds them in false apostate Christianity. And for and 
very for various reasons and in divers measures so um, and eventually it's on pain of death they, the, the image of the beast we know solicits the worship of death and it eventually causes it it the revelation 13 15 uh, and he had power to give life in the image of the beast that the image of, beast, of the beast should both speak and cause it was, as many would not worship the image of beast should be killed so actually in the final moments the image of beast will threaten to kill anybody that will not receive the mark of the beast. And so it captures people this way also. But this Matthew 5, 13 depicts the falling away of false apostate Christianity into with the mark of the beast and the total evacuation of the spirit of grace and how the image to the beast looks at its captives as good for nothing. It doesn't, but to be cast out and to trodden under foot of men. And I believe this is the way their flesh will be treated. And the image of the beast is cruel. I mean, Satan... There's no love in there. There's no love, love in these people. This is how Satan is going to treat his captives in false apostate Christianity as the image to the beast, the civil power, holds people captive on pain of death to the mark of the beast. So spiritually, Matthew 5.13 depicts false apostate Christianity in perfect union with the beast and his image drinking of and drunk with the spirit of Antichrist, the cup of devils whose residence is nothing but a lie. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 21 and 22. These listen to the voice of the world as it was magnified by the image of the beast instead of the voice of God and in doing so condemned their own habit habitations. Matthew chapter 10 verses 21. 1 John 4.16. Ecclesiastes 8.8. 8. Ecclesiastes 9 chapter excuse me, chapter 9, verse 1, Galatians chapter 6, and verse 7 and 8. Their self-imposed condemnation of God's people and permanent residence upon their own head. And we know that they have, they condemned God's people, but God says, render unto her double according to her works, and that be not deceived. God, Galatians 6, 7, 8, be not deceived. God is not mocked for it, so a man soweth that shall he also reap. So as they, they labor to condemn God's people, this is the manifestation of the condemnation that resides within their own hearts, and God declares that they have the mark of the beast and that the seven last plagues will fall on them as it does on all other flesh that that have the mark of the beast and the total of, are seated in their final seats in the kingdom of hell. Revelation chapter 17, verses 1 through 6. The total evacuation of the spirit of grace within all flesh. They're no longer abiding in love. Love. God, the, the fruits and the spirit of life is no longer flowing through them, even in a passive manifestation as manifested by Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. And I wrote here finally, Revelation 18, 6, Song of Solomon chapter 8, verses 6 and 7. And Revelation 18, 6 says, Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double under her, double according to her works, and the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double. So as the, the, the false apostate Christianity attempts to condemn the, the righteous, the true people, the true followers that love God and are retaining love and receive the seal of God and abide in eternity, there the condemnation, condemnation actually falls upon their own head. And the, the, the works that they attempt to perform on the on the true believers and on the body of Christ is rendered unto them double. So, Jeffrey Leone, if you're edified by this program, please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, receive notifications of future installments. And remember, you can come to the throne room of God today and receive your healing directly if you're abiding in mercy and grace, as manifested by Matthew chapter 10, excuse me, Matthew chapter 13, verses 10 through 15. Thank you.